so much for joining us. I am here today talking Diablo 2 Resurrected with Rod Ferguson. Rod, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks. I'm excited to be here. And I'm excited to talk about Diablo 2. I played the alpha. I loved it. I cannot wait to get into the full game. Uh, one of the main questions I have, though, is about the graphics. So you made it so that you can quickly swap between the graphics. How difficult was that to get implemented? And like, why don't you just tell me a little bit more about the process of designing in that way? Yeah, I mean, the big thing was really about we wanted to make sure that the game was authentic to the original. And so we, this is a remaster, not a remake. And the way that we did the remaster was underneath the surface, the actual engine that's driving the game is the original game. That that 2D sprite game that you know and love is under there making all the, did you hit the monster? What loot should fall? All those sorts of things. And so what we've done is we've created a layer on top and which is this 4K HD layer with Dolby surround sound and those sorts of things. And so, you know, in some ways it was hard to have that, but in another way, because the game is underneath the surface, switching between our HD layer and the game that's running underneath was actually relatively straightforward. And the big reveal today is that we have a date, September 23rd, the game's gonna have cross progression. There's a beta in August on PlayStation, Xbox, PC, where you're adding the Druid and Paladin for the first time. How do I get in as soon as humanly possible to play more <laughs> Diablo 2? Uh, well, there's two ways to get in. As part of our announce, uh, you know, for the date, we're also starting pre-orders on console. And so uh, anybody who's pre-ordered on PC and console will have the opportunity to get into the early access beta in August. And then after that will be an open beta. So if you want to get in as early as possible, all you have to do is pre-order. You know, uh, I love taking a look at the technology, especially on the consoles you have. We, we're in this time where you got the PS5, the Xbox Series X, the Xbox Series S, and then all the consoles that came before that. So what are your targets on the the, cons the older consoles, we'll call them, and then the new consoles? Can you tell us more about the tech specs there? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have them all like written out here exactly, but like our goal is on the latest and greatest is to get to the, that 4K, um, you know, and trying to push to 60 frames and, and those sorts of things. I think what's interesting with the technology is just like how much is actually there like the fact that you have eight player co-op you know that was something that hasn't been around in a while um and so bringing from you know the fact that a feature that existed 21 years ago is actually going to be somewhat new and interesting and in, in 21 years later uh is kind of fun but you've got eight necromancers creating you know lots and lots of skeletons it can definitely push the system so yeah but we're really focused on making sure that it's the best like the original was 800 by 600 2d and like I said, we're really trying to push to this 4K 60 that we can have on, on and sort of the top of the line consoles and PC. So like when you're developing and testing this on consoles, you're testing it on PC, how does having those two engines running at the same time, the old one, which is your base, as you said, and the new one that you can swap to on the fly at any time, how do you test that and make sure that both are working well at the same time? Yeah, it's well, it's been great in, in the sense that we're, you know, because we're so focused on parity, you know, that again, trying to be as authentic as possible, that we can kind of just keep flipping back and forth and understanding, okay, how do we think about, you know, are the things in the right place? And oh, I'm running some weird collision in HD that, oh, when I switch to SD, I can see oh, there's something in the way and we don't have that represented correctly. And, and you do have to do that testing because, you know, the original game ran on a much lower frame rate. And so, where like modern games run on time and and sort of the 20 years ago you're running on frames you can't do that anymore because you can get the frame count so high it causes the simulation to sort of break and so you have to kind of work between this sort of translation layer between something that's running on you know a certain number of frames a second versus okay how do i run on time so that the events click at the right place and so it's been a lot of engineering around knowing if you hit, knowing if this animation played at the right time, whether, you know, certain things miss and that, all those sorts of things. So it's, there's been a lot of work to go through that translation of going, okay, a frame-based engine and now a time-based rendering engine for the HD. Uh, it's, it, there's been a lot of complexities to that, um, but it, it, it's working really well. And, and it, it feels great both on PC and on console and being able to play with the controller. Yeah. So you brought up being able to have these these big collaborative battles, so to speak, where you just kind of go through and clear the map with a bunch of your friends. Uh, what has that been like during playtesting? Like, what has the reaction been that you've seen from the community or just from people playing the game internally at the studio? Yeah, for the multiplayer stuff, we've only been able to test it so far, you know, within the team and such. Like the alpha we did uh, earlier was a single player alpha and the response to that was fantastic. And in fact, it was kind of really what allowed us to have confidence in our date because 
you know, when, when you're bringing sort of this beloved game um, and making it feel modern and contemporary, you're making decisions around what should you leave the same for authentic reasons and what should you change because you want it to be contemporary. Like, hey, maybe if we had a shared stash where you could share equipment across characters, which didn't exist, or having auto gold pickups so that you don't have to click on every piece of gold. You know, those are decisions that we as a team are making, hoping like, okay, let's not mess it up. Like you have this amazing experience and that's the joy of doing a remaster is you know it's fun. You know it's an amazing game, so don't screw it up as you try to modernize it and make it feel contemporary with the, you know modern visuals. And so it was really trying to find that balance. And so what the alpha showed us in terms of the feedback that we received from players is that like for the most part, we, we, we nailed it. Like we, we found a really good groove on what we wanted to accomplish with that game. And so uh, that really gave us the confidence to be like, okay, that, you know, now we can focus on you know, understanding that feedback and reacting to it, but also like, let's go to the next stage in terms of giving people that multiplayer experience as well. And so that allowed us to feel confident about where we are and why we have the September 23 date. So was that idea of keeping the original feel, so to speak, was that something you landed on from the get go? Like when you were in initial concepting and planning and everything, were you just like, we have to keep it as close to the original as possible with these really minor improvements? Yeah, it's it, that was the big thing. Like it, it's Diablo 2 sort of set a bar and kind of helped establish what is the uh, action role playing genre, right? And so you don't want to mess with that. And that's even when we looked at the balancing, people were saying like, hey, if you're going to remaster the game, why don't you change the balancing of the classes or the balances of the skills? And it was just, it felt like we have to be careful because then it's not that same experience. And so again, like everything we did, we sort of did with a, in a measured way of like, okay, are we fundamentally changing how the game plays or how it feels? Um, and versus are we making sort of your experience better without doing that. And so again, as we made individual choices, like, like take one of the things about a game like from 21 years ago is that there's a lot more discovery, you know, and a lot more things that weren't explained to you. And so when you get a quest in Diablo 2, you've got to go find it. <laughs> like you got to, okay, it says go to the, the monastery and you're like, I don't even know where the monastery is. So I'm going to go out and start adventuring and start moving through the maps until I discover the monastery. Whereas a modern game would put a, like a little arrow on your map and say, go here, that's the monastery. And, you know, and that felt like, sure, that's a convenience and, and a quality of life improvement for some players, but it kind of takes away the essence. And same thing with sort of inventory Tetris, you know, the inventory space in D2 is very small and, people are like, oh, you know, like, what about a charm bag so we can put all of our charms somewhere else? And what if we may increase the inventory size and all these sorts of things? And what you realize is that actually that constraint around your tiny inventory is is a, a big part of what makes the game work in terms of some of the things you have to think about or what you're picking up and what you're not. And that, that Tetris is kind of a big part of the experience of playing. And, you know, we for a while we had an auto sort button and, and as soon as it went in, you immediately realized that, no, that doesn't work at all. Uh, <laughs> and it takes away some part of it, what's core to playing the game. Yeah. I just want to call it one of the big things about we we're really excited about with the trailer that we were able to show at E3 uh, was really getting to see the cinematic or a sneak peek at what the cinematics are. So, you know, one of the things we talked about is the game is a remaster. Uh, we felt like the, the game, you know, again, it's a legendary game. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the storytelling and the cinematic quality matched kind of the, the game. It, it deserved more than a 4K up res or an AI up res uh, of 20 year old cinematics. And so we went in and uh, we partnered with our story and franchise development team. They call SFD at Blizzard. They're responsible for all those amazing CG cinematics. And we partnered with a company called Access Entertainment. And they, we work together to take the story shot for shot when we make uh, all the cinematics. So 27 minutes of, of amazing CG cinematics where you get to see sort of Maris's journey and following the Dark Wanderer. And you got to see a little taste of that at, uh, at E3 and uh, we can't wait to show more. So Rod, your career, you've worked on some, you know, major franchises. What has it been? What has it been like for you jumping into the Diablo franchise? Are there any techniques across the different games you're working on, like Diablo 2 that are being utilized in Diablo 4? Really, I'm fishing for anything about Diablo 4 that you could <laughs> tease. But um, yeah, feel free to elaborate on that. It's a good bridge. I'm glad it was and nice of you to tell me what you're doing, going for there. Um, uh, two things. I mean, one is like from a sort of going from leading, you know, the Gears of War franchise to now leading the Diablo franchise. Uh, it's definitely been different for in a couple of ways. One is, uh, you know, when I was part of Gears, I joined uh, Epic in 2005 and I was part of really Gears from the very beginning. And I was 
I pretty much had a hand in shipping all versions of Gears. And at some point I kind of became, you know, I was the creative director up at the coalition as well as the studio head. And uh, I, I knew, like, when you had a question about Gears of War, you come to me and I can tell you the answer. I, I knew the lore, I helped create the lore and, and those sorts of things. Um, coming into Diablo, which is one of my favorite franchises ever, and it's been around for 25 years, like this December will be the 25th anniversary for D1. Um, and even though I was an avid player and I loved it, like, I'm still not, like, I don't have the depth of knowledge that a creator would have. And so I have really had to come in as a student and not as a teacher uh, as in that way. Um, and then the other is really just sort of the pandemic. I mean, made the decision to like, you know, move from Vancouver and start a whole new journey with my family and, and work on a new franchise. And uh, I had eight days in the office before the pandemic really hit and we started work from home. And so for the last 15 months that I've been uh, the executive producer for the franchise, I've been doing it through calls like this. And so trying to lead a team and multiple teams, because we've got, you know, Diablo 3 and Diablo 2R, we've got Diablo Immortal and Diablo 4, like helping to to guide those teams and, and work with them. Uh, it's been really interesting to have to do through, um, you know, through a, through a video camera and a monitor. Um, but to go to your fishing for D4 information, I mean, the thing I can say is, you know, one of the things we did after we announced D4 is we really wanted to keep um, all the players invested in the game and understanding the kind of decisions we were making and and include them on the journey and so we were doing quarterly blog updates and uh, even we did sort of a video blog update at blizzcon if you will so our next one is coming so uh, it's coming at the end of june and it'll really be focused around the characters and the character art so we're really excited about having another blog update and, and keeping people up to up to date with what we're doing with d4 Wow. Uh, well, that's great to hear. I'm happy that I got a little bit of something about Diablo 4. <laughs> You'll see more, and I promise. Great, great. And I am truly, really excited about Diablo 2. Thank you. And thank you to the team for all the work that you put in on that game.